building and cutting trials with two new designs of paring knives. William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And here we try out two new to the world designs of paring knives. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today we're working with three different designs of paring knives. One here. This is our long paring knife. It is distinguished by having a longer than usual blade as well as a longer than usual handle. And this particular knife is ready to go on the belt sander here. As you can see the scales have been put on and the pins have been installed but not trimmed as yet and we're nearly ready for trimming and sanding. This is another variety of paring knife designed to fit flat on the table with a shorter blade and a shorter handle for smaller handed people. And this of course uh, we have yet to grind or harden or pin or install scales on. Then we have our Billy Joe Rubido design here these scales are made of salvaged furniture wood and have been rough cut on the scroll saw prior to putting in the grinding box. Which is made from a scrap piece of steel. Uh, it is distinguished in that it has a very large handle, a relatively short blade, this bulbous portion here on the end designed to fit well in the hand. And that is exactly the function that this knife is designed to do. I have what I like to call found steel here in that uh, the scales are matched down to the steel all the way around now. And I have the basic shape done with this coarse grip. This is about the finished size of the grip. Our paring knives are getting much further along. Now this is of course a conventional carbon steel paring knife from Ontario Blade. Uh, this is still in the stage of a blank. It is yet to be ground, the blade thinned and heat treated. Now this blade has been finished so far as the heat treatment and grinding is concerned and now we have rough fit the scales. We've gotten down to metal all around and now we're ready just to put on a 220 grit and do the final polishing. In this case, these are the scales from our reclaimed furniture wood. And we have gotten them down to the metal. And they are now quite thick in this direction. And I'm debating on whether to leave them at that thickness or not. We have completed our work on our two new styles of paring knife. Now originally, we made a paring knife like this, which is a unique design, and this one was forged from a piece of salvaged steel. So this is high carbon steel, and it's designed, as many of my knives are, to rest flat on a surface. This is another variant of the similar design I have it with a much shorter blade, just a general uh, utility knife for cutting whatever needs to be cut. Now, our altogether new design is this. This is a paring knife for a guy who has an extra large hand. That is a hand with fingers about an inch longer than my own, with a relatively short blade. There has always been a persistent demand for people who have big hands for a robust paring knife with a big grip and a small blade. Then we have a thin bladed paring knife here, which in this case has McCarter grips and a long thin blade 
almost like a fillet knife and you could use this to fillet small fish for example like ordinary bass and uh, these sorts of critters. This would be a very handy knife for that but it's generally a paring or utility knife but has a much longer than usual handle for an average size guy. Then this is a steak knife. Uh, it's billed as usually as a steak utility knife and it fits an average hand, very very comfortable uh, it will do some of these tasks better than others. And what we're going to do is process some corn, we're going to cut up some onions, we're going to make some guacamole, and we're going to slice some sausage here and uh, make up some good seasoned corn on the cob for supper. And now you get a closer look of the individual blades. And we're going to see how some of these work. First off on the onion. I wish I had one of my choppers out here now. Does okay, but not really spectacularly well. My larger bladed chopping knives do much better on reducing onion to small mince kind of sizes. So this is just not, just not quite the appropriate knife for it. Let's try some guacamole. This is the shortest blade knife. Is the smallest handle. Very nearly. It peels good. Let's see about this one. Does good. I like this one better. Okay, try this. Does very well. Feels good in the hand. Okay. 
Guacamole is just about right. It's just about ideal. I'm going to reduce this onion and add it to the guacamole, and then we'll take up the corn. And now we're going to see how our little knives do on corn. Well, we will start with this one. Okay. Now where we want to cut, right there. Three. Number five. Go back and try this one again. tough. With the corn dressing, all four blades really struggle. These stalks on the end of the cob are really tough, and they did do it, but uh, almost any of my larger knives would have done it more efficiently. Just not the task for this particular style of knife. Now we're going to cut some sausage and see how we do. Okay, this is a small paring knife shape, and this is our prototype blade. Doing good. All right. Our short bladed, large handle paring knife. Not quite as well. The longer blade really helps cut. So we should find that this longer blade here does better. The thickness of the blade is detrimental. Okay, this is our steak knife. Our steak knife does far better. It has a longer reach, the thinner, sharper blade. Cut through as well.
Well, our reclaimed steak knife actually did better than our long paring knife here. Best. Second best. Third best. And fourth best. So, this was our clear winner in this case. Well, now this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This is our officially registered trademark from Hobie's Knives of China. Here are some of our knives shown on a red background, more of our designs on a one-inch pegboard, some of our inspirational spirits, these from an old Japanese print, and our outdoor books, these including a prize-winning extreme muzzleloading, backyard deer hunting, practical bow fishing, and crossbow hunting. Now, what you have seen in this video is exactly why I test my knives. I'm going to have to modify the edge configuration of both of these designs to get them to really work well. For more information on Hobie's Knives of China, you can go to the blog below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 625 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.